So I just read this article here on uh, YouTube. The sci science explains instant attraction. It talks about a scientific study that was done somewhere dealing with you know the process, the brain process on how we judge a mate, a possible mate by physical attractiveness, by just seeing their face. Um, and of course it has some deeper aspects, but you know, it'll go into, you know, what's part of brains exactly and whatnot. But ultimately, you know, what is being said is what is being shown, the truth that's being spoken is that, like I try to end with saying, um, There are two ways to look at the results published in November 7th issue of the Journal of Neuroscience. One, Cooper said, is that we're pretty shallow. In the first few milliseconds of seeing a new face, we're evaluating physical attractiveness. But the uh, wastromedial prefrontal cortex goes a bit deeper, very quickly asking, yeah, but are they compatible with me? Well, see... The evaluation, the evaluating of physical attractiveness is our natural animal instincts. It's the, the animalistic attributes of us. You know, that's what, you know, we always try to separate ourselves from the animals, but we always show that we're nothing but animals. We act just like the animals. Um, the st statistics say that 50 percent of all marriages end so one out of two does a divorce they end all right then i think if we were to go deeper in those marriages that stay together that didn't divorce how many stay together for for comfort reasons for money reasons for shit i just don't even feel like going through the hassle reasons for all that how many of those would, if they had an opportunity, if if what it is, whatever it was that was holding them back from divorce, from getting divorced, if that problem was resolved, how many people would divorce? And I'm sure the number will go up higher, probably 75. And I think ultimately what we're showing is that by nature, we aren't born, we, we aren't built to be with one person, at least when it comes with the male species all right you look within nature and it's only a few species where one male and one female are together a lot of times you see a male that gets with various amounts of females or you have a male who is in charge of a group of females things of that nature and so it's no difference with us humans by nature is that it's just that at some point, whether it's by religion or by whoever, wherever you want to say it started, uh, somebody's with their mates for for the rest of their, their what's their life, and at some point it became valued. It became you know it became looked upon as having value that if you that it should be you with your wife, you with your husband. And it's you two together, and y'all should stay together. There became a value in the monogamy, uh, somehow, someplace. But like I said, the numbers speak different. That that that's that that was a false creation, if you will. It's it's we're trying to force something to happen, and ultimately, the truth of who we are wins out. It wins out, and it's shown and proven in, in truth through the numbers. So, yeah, so. When we see someone, it is part of nature. When we see someone, we're thinking, hey, I like that ass. I like the lips. I like what it is. And I want to mate. I'm attracted to them. And they are attracted to me. So I think we can have pretty offspring. And that's basically how, how all animals work. The female judges the male on their attributes. The biggest male. All animals, the biggest or the, the whatever whatever form they use to show that they have a superiority over the other males, whether it's a bird with 
more colorful feathers or larger feathers, whatever it is, because inherently it's known within animal instinct, within animals themselves, it's just a natural instinct that they are offering something that is of greater value, that 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 gives them that that gives something to add value to their prolonging of their lifeline of their very being and it's really about the lifeline of life itself because you know because a bird when the judge is thinking oh now my you know my ancestors will go on and be strong forever no it's just a natural part of life it's that part of that we don't actually have control of this is a subconscious unconscious thing that happened it's part of life of wanting to go on life itself wants to go on the life force in us the life aspect the natural part of us of all beings that procreate is how can we continue how can i continue to go on and so it looks for the strength and so like i said we as humans always try to fight against this and, and it makes no sense we 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 close our eyes but we know we close our eyes to many things we we constantly close our eyes to the truth we accept the truth in some aspects of our life we value the truth in some aspects of life but in others and usually it's it's when the truth goes contrary to our hell belief or especially that that religious belief system if the truth speaks against that oh it ain't good well i'm, I'm not listening to scientists now it's interesting i had a conversation just this past weekend this past sunday with this christian lady um uh, was out watching basketball and she was talking about you know she you know she believes in scientists um you know she goes to the doctor she believes in you know what they say should be done for you know curing colds and all this and all that but then when we got a subject of evolution oh well, no nah, i think they're just they just giving a belief there well yeah <laughs> that's what science does science operates by nature off of believing something but what it does is it tries to prove that belief it you know it it creates a it you know has a hypothesis a thesis it it tells you well i believe this but then it goes out to prove it it goes out to find a data it goes out to find the things that that help prove that what they believe is the truth as being the truth you know they and so, and then they go to try to replicate it to once again prove, well, I believe this is going to happen if I do this. Well, if I keep doing it and doing it, it keeps occurring and occurring, well, the truth bears out. Well, this is what happened. And and for the most part, scientists are honest in doing this. There have been occasion, occasions where, you know, scientists have, you know, fudged numbers or whatnot, and a lot of times they've been found out. But because there is a peer review, because you have scientists, you know, going after and 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 trying to validate or disprove what another scientist said well it usually ends up bearing out and the truth is shown and if you try to do the same thing to this within religion well you know it's not accepted you know when somebody comes to and starts trying to discern a religion and truth well those adherents of that religion you know there they fight back they don't want to hear it you know the belief comes before the truth like i said but you know Religious people will accept science for for the greater part of their life. I she had a camera, I said, you know, there's science behind this camera. You know, they 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 did the, the, the mathematics, they did everything to build this camera, and they will do the same to build the next model. You know, like I said, so she accept the one level, but if it comes against her her belief, her religion, stuff that goes counter to her her word of God, I'm talking about the Bible. Well, then no science is discounted. <laughs> they have no idea what they're talking about. You know, so like I said, so we constantly close our eyes to truth if it comes goes counter to what it is that we want to believe. And is it, if it, is it truly what we want to believe or is it what it is that we believe because we have no choice but to believe it? I hope you see the difference. The belief that someone chooses, is it they choose it or because that's who they are. They have no choice. They cannot, they literally cannot understand anything differently. They literally, if, if you were to present them to them, the reason a Christian is Christian is because when you present Islam or Hinduism or whatever it's to them and they read it, 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 it confuses them or hurts their mind. It makes no sense. But if you get on a Bible in Christianity, it's like, yes, that's it. It feels right to them. Or is it that they just, because they were brought up in as a child, because they was indoctrinated, 
they choose to go counter as they read something. Like I said, when I was talking to them about reading through the Bible, he talked to people who said they read through the Bible and, and they go to the contradictions, then they want to make up something. Well, no, it's not really a contradiction. What God meant was, and, and several times I said, well, who said that? Who told you that? Well, God said, and when he say that? Well, a long time he said the Bible. So, you know, you get into our conversation and, and it's, it's always ex excuse based. And if you're not speaking the truth, then excuse is a lie. All right. Um, excuse could be a belief, but if the truth is, pre is presented to you and you automatically and you don't want to accept it, then what you are doing, you're accepting a lie and your excuse is a lie. Um, so belief, a hell belief can be a lie or it isn't a lie, but it is a lie if you know if the truth is presented to you and you refuse to accept it be totally on the basis that it goes against your belief. You don't want to hear it. So like I said, so back to the number thing, like, like I said, so that's a true aspect of who we are. We want to procreate. We want to have sex and have offspring. And that's the true nature of who we are. Uh, there are some who are outside the norm who want to be one person. There are people who, for whatever it is, however it works, they are that that perfect couple. They are soulmates and they're gift forever. But like I said, the numbers dictate, the truth dictates that who we are as a being. You want to get around, at least the males, the women. And I think the women not accepting not you know not accepting a man want to be her and someone else may too also in itself be totally um, society based you know the pressure from society doing that because um, in my dealings you know back when I was you know running the streets I was always honest with the women I dealt with um, I'm going to be with you but I'm not going to, to be exclusively with you I'm going to see other women. And I don't think I've ever had a problem. A woman has never had a problem with that. It's, it's when you get into that, uh, yeah, we're going to be in a relationship thing. And, and, and then we start getting, you know, start getting possessive. And then it's like, well, no, I can't share you. All right. That's all.